you guys need to be encouraged and know that you've got fight on the inside of you. You've got fight on the inside of you. Regardless of circumstance, you've got fight on the inside of you. You've got a new covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. You have a new covenant with God. Man, this is awesome. All right. Yeah, she just nails it. Sickness, disease does not come from God. When you, when you make a statement like that, you have, to, you have to have an understanding of the cross. You have to have an understanding of the atonement and what Jesus has done. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the body and the blood. We're talking about understanding the atonement and what Jesus has done. Today we're celebrating, we're remembering what Jesus accomplished on the cross for us. When we take this body and this bread, we need to re- the, 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 the bread represents the body. We need to remember that this body was actually broken for us. His body, like he, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and speaking of the bread, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. When we take communion, we have to do it in remembrance of what Jesus did. We have to do this in remembrance of what he did. We need to remember, man, this bread, it's bread. But what it symbolizes is the broken body of Christ. And in his body being broken, he he paid for our healing. He paid for our wholeness. He paid for our deliverance. He made a way for us through the breaking of his body. And with his blood, he wrote a new covenant. A new covenant with his blood. And when we look at life, the universe, ourselves, our Christian walk, the Bible. We have to look at it through the lens of Christ and the new covenant, his atonement, his grace that he has extended to us. Christ has to be the center of your universe. He has to be the center of your Christianity. When Jesus went to the cross, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed for you. Everything changed for this world. Everything changed for humanity. Before Jesus came, God spoke through the prophets. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Before Jesus came, God spoke to us through the prophets at various times and various ways. But then, he wanted to fully reveal himself to us. So Jesus came to give us a full revelation of him. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. We actually started a Bible study on Hebrews Wednesday night, and we just spent the whole time just in chapter one, just going through these verses. If you can make it 6.30 on Wednesdays, it was awesome, awesome, awesome. And it's just great to be able to, to share this time with each other and just to share revelation and insight that we've, that we've gotten from the study of the scripture and just to come together and study that together. Now, Hebrews is definitely a book worth studying, okay? And I encourage all of you, if you can't make it to the Bible study on Wednesday, just read through the book of Hebrews with us. Study it independently because we're going to be talking about Hebrews from time to time for the rest of our lives. So (laughs) you might as well know what it says, okay? (laughs) When we interpret scripture, we need to interpret it through the lens of Christ, and this is especially especially true for communion. You have to interpret what we're doing here today through the lens of Christ. You have to interpret it through what he actually did and not just as some tradition or some ceremony that we do 
without the significance of what this body, of what this bread and this, this, this juice symbolize. It's the actual body and the blood of Christ that we're, we're celebrating what he did and we're remembering, we're acknowledging that if we have sickness in our body, his body was broken to heal us. If, we, if we're not whole in our body or in our mind, his body was broken to heal us. And so when we take communion today, I want you to acknowledge, wow, <laughs> this is what Jesus did for me. He was broken so that I don't have to suffer with this anymore. And I want you to take it and I want you to be thankful for what he has done for you and what he is doing for you and what he has provided for you. Taking it and acknowledging, acknowledging him, remembering him. And when you take the cup, I want you to remember you're not under the old covenant. You're under the new covenant now. You're under this covenant of grace based on what he has done for you, not based on what you're doing for him. Now, when we talk about the old covenant and the new covenant, sometimes we get them mixed up. It's easy. It's easy because we got a lot, of, a lot of training, a lot of teaching that we get and kind of thrown at us and we, we step into it. And if we start, if you start reading, you know, I'm going to read the Bible from cover to cover. Bad idea. <laughs> start with the Gospel of John and work yourself from there, okay? You can't understand the Old Covenant without Jesus. You can't understand the Old, Old Testament without Jesus. Everything has to be through Jesus. Everything has to be through grace. Everything has to be through this new covenant, the one that he wrote in his blood for us. Now, this is what we're celebrating today. Now, when we talk about the old versus the new, if I say, how many of you know you're not supposed to eat bacon? You guys look at me like I'm crazy because we all love bacon. We love it. And if you don't love bacon, we need to talk. I'll pray for you after service. <laughs> bacon is awesome. Bacon is like, it's amazing. I love bacon. It smells so good. It tastes so good. It's part of this, it's part of the new covenant. You know, in the old covenant, under the old covenant, you couldn't eat bacon. For real. You couldn't eat bacon. You couldn't eat it. You couldn't have a bacon sandwich. You couldn't have a bacon hamburger. Bacon cheeseburger. You couldn't have bacon on your pizza. You couldn't eat bacon. You couldn't eat pork. So this is like super easy. We're like, oh, bacon, I love bacon. But if I say, well, mm, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. What is that? It's a song we sing when we're driving in our car, listening to Christian radio. The Lord gives and takes away. You know, when I hear that song, something happens in my head. And I start to see these little, I don't know if it's high blood pressure or what, but I have really low blood pressure. But I, 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 I feel something shift in my head. And it's just like, oh. And I see like little, kind of like Freddie saw those little prayers shooting up. I see little sparkles on the sides of my eyes. I'm like, Ugh. That's from Job. 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 Chapter 1, well, the Lord gives and takes away. We have to look at the context. When Jesus says, John chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, I've come, I'm the door. I've come that you may enter and have life and life abundantly. And if, if I'm quoting a scripture like that and I'm having a conversation with you and you're like, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Hmm. There was a mystery. It was Christ in you. Remember, we talked about that. <laughs> that was the mystery. Now you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this is what Jesus, woo, Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying to us. He's saying exactly what he came for. I don't interpret Jesus through the book of Job. It doesn't make any sense. I have to interpret Job through the book, through Jesus. I have to look at Job through the new covenant. And in fact, Job, in, chap in the last chapter 42, he says, I was talking about things I don't even know. I'm so sorry. I heard about you, but now that I see you, you're completely different. But that doesn't stop us from saying, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways, brother. And so many times we take that scripture and we throw it out there when we don't understand something like, well, why didn't that man come back? Why did, why? Why, you know, why did that guy die? I prayed for him and he came, you know. And then some good meaning 
person comes along and puts your arm around you and says, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Thanks, Job. <laughs> it's awesome. You speak of things you do not understand. <laughs> Try looking at the new covenant, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> Rather than blaming God when something doesn't happen, because either way, you don't know what happened. Either way, right? Well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. You're saying, I don't know, but let's blame God. Or we could say, I don't know. But I know God is good all the time because Jesus tells me in John 10 that he came to give life and life abundantly. And the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. So my point in that is that when we, when we study scriptures, we have to study them through Jesus. We have to study them through the lens of the new covenant. We can't put the words of Christ and the words of Job on equal playing field. The words of Job have to be interpreted through the words of Jesus. They have to be interpreted through the new covenant. Whatever we look at, especially when it comes to studying the word, dividing the scripture, rightly dividing the word, we have to apply the blood of the lamb. We have to apply the blood of Christ to it. Bacon is easy. Okay, you can say bacon. Oh, everybody loves bacon. That's funny. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but the Lord gives and takes away. Well, that's biblical. So is not eating bacon. All right? Seriously. Are, are you guys going <laughs> to digest this one? You know, and then the other one that I get, oh, another one out of the book of Job is, well, a man's days are numbered. Again, more wisdom from Job, the man who admits he doesn't know what he's talking about. Do you know what Job actually says right before that, in that scripture right before that? Uh, it's Job, Job 1, uh, chapter, uh, I don't think it's chapter 1, it's, no, it's not chapter 1, but um, he actually says right before, he says, who can make the clean, or who can make the unclean clean? Right before he says the man's days are numbered. He says, who can make the unclean clean? Nobody! Obviously, Job was missing a revelation of Jesus, okay? So you have to look at it through that text. Like, Job didn't understand the new covenant. He was not under the new covenant. He didn't get Jesus. But in the end, in chapter 42, he started seeing God for who he was. And he was like, whoa, I apologize. I was speaking of things I do not know. So next time someone, a good meaning person, you hear him say something like, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. If they speak in that to you, you have, you have every right to say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. I don't understand what happened, but I know God is good all the time. And some people are going to think and be like, well, maybe Jesus came to give life and life abundantly, but there's still a father up there, and sometimes he gets a little angry. All right. Hebrews chapter 1, or Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, He is the radiance of God's glory in the exact representation of his being. Not partial representation. If something is an exact representation, that means it's exact, right? <laughs> okay. In the Greek, that word meant exact, De identical, exact. Jesus was the exact representation of the Father. So in other words, what you see in Jesus is what you see in the Father. What you don't see in Jesus, you don't see in the Father. Exact representation. So you can say, if Jesus came to give life and life abundantly, it's because the Father is giving life and life abundantly. You know, Jesus has to be our lens for understanding Scripture. All Scripture has to be in interpreted through the atonement, through Jesus' blood, through what he has provided for us. Especially communion. Especially communion. Especially what we're doing today. It has to be you have to get it through grace. You have to get it through the lens of grace. Now, so me, so many, including myself, for a long time, I was terrified to take communion. 
as I thought I might be taking it in an unworthy manner. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant, but I didn't want to take any chances, and I certainly didn't want to get sick and die. Right? Let's be honest here. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person in this room that skipped communion because I didn't want to die, because I didn't want to do it in an unworthy manner. I, I skipped a lot of communions. Skipped a lot of communions. And some communions I should have skipped. I, it's a long story. I was in a different church, not, not just a different denomination, but a big church. I didn't know it was a closed table. I got caught. I busted. My friend said it would be okay. He said, oh, no, the priest lets us do this all the time. I always bring friends. Well, I didn't know the bishop was there that day. Bishop calls me on the line. Well, I love Jesus. Doesn't count. Okay, sorry. All right. Oh, this is different. It's different. <laughs> Some tables are closed. Our table is open. You love Jesus? Come on up. We're going we're gonna to take communion at the end here. So now, when we drop down to verse, you know, we're, in, we're, um, we're back to the Lord's table here. <laughs> when we drop down to the verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, and it says, So then, whoever eats of the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat, of the, eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Here's the big one. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep or died. Woo. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. All right. We need to interpret these scriptures through the lens of Jesus because we're talking about communion here. Now, I used to think that if I didn't have all my sins confessed out there and I took communion, I was going to die or at least get really, really sick or maybe come down with a cold or something bad was going to happen, right? Something bad, right? Because this is what it says, something bad is going to happen, right? I need to, make, I need to examine myself. What did Jesus tell us to do? You say, this is my body, this is my blood. When you take this, remember your sins. No. He said, when you take this, remember what I did for you. Remember what I did for you. Not remember your sins. When we examine ourselves, apart from the grace of God, we will always be unworthy. When you examine yourself for communion, you need to say, am I accepting his grace? Am I, taking his, am I partaking of the body and the blood through the grace and mercy of Jesus, or eh, have I earned this? Have I earned this? That is called taking it unworthily. Now, you can apply this to believers, and you can apply it to non-believers. If you're coming to the Lord's table and you're taking communion based on your own merit, not based on what Jesus did with his body and his blood, you're taking it in an unworthy manner. And do you know what? When we, take, when we don't walk in his grace, we're guilty of this judgment that he talked about, the sickness and the death, why many among you are sick and sleeping and dying, is because they weren't acknowledging what the body was broken for. Jesus said, this is my body that was broken for you. Paul says, that is why many among you are, are, not, are weak and sick and have fallen asleep. Because you, have not, you are not discerning of the body of Christ. You are not discerning of what he has done for you. Paul's telling these people that the reason why you're sick, the reason why many of you have died, is because you're not discerning what Jesus has done for you. You're not taking the fullness of his grace. You're not walking in the fullness of his salvation. If you're not receiving his grace, guess what? Christ has no effect of you. Christ has no use to you. You're going to walk in your judgment. You're going to walk in your sickness. You're going to continue to walk in your sin. 
You're going to continue to walk in your disease. But when you come to the table of communion by faith through grace, not faith in yourself and in your own good works, but by faith in the grace that God has provided for you, you get to have the benefits of the body. You get to have the benefits of the blood. I know this is a different way of thinking about this. But I want you to think about it differently. I want you to examine communion is not about your sin. It's not. It's about his sacrifice. We, when you spend more time being terrified that you may have forgotten to confess a sin before the Lord, you're not getting it, okay? You're not getting what this happened here. What's going on? Jesus said, remember what I did for you. Do you know that being a coward qualifies you to go to hell? Revelation I think chapter 12 says, if you're a coward, you're going to hell. So if you're scared to take communion, you're, oh, sorry, you're going to hell. Anything that's not of faith, according to the book of Romans, is a sin. When's the last time you did something without faith? Well, guess what? You sinned. You better confess it. No, okay? Communion is remembering the body that was broken for your healing, the body that was broken for your wholeness. It's remembering what Jesus has done for you, what he has provided for you by his grace. You know what? The Lord gives grace, and he takes away your sin and shame. He gives righteousness, and he takes away your unworthiness. So yes, the Lord gives and takes away. Through the lens of Jesus, the Lord gives. He, Jesus gives you his righteousness, and he takes your condemnation and guilt. That is the way we have to look at this. That is the way we have to interpret the Lord's Supper. That is the way we have to interpret communion. Now, when we take this today, I want you to think about and acknowledge what the Lord did with his body on the cross. By his stripes, you are healed. Acknowledge and remember what Jesus has done. If you guys want to come up, acknowledge and remember what Jesus has done. He's forgotten about what you've done, okay? His sins, you're not, he's not going to remember them anymore. Acknowledge and remember what Jesus has done for you. By, his, by, by the brokenness of his body, by the brokenness of his body, by the brokenness of his body, you have healing. You have healing. You have wholeness. By the brokenness of his body. All right? With this blood, with his blood, he wrote a new covenant of grace. So when you come to the table today, I don't want you to come with fear. Now, what if I did something wrong? Am I going to make it home without throwing up? Okay? No. I want you to come to the table today and celebrate what Jesus has done for you. Celebrate the grace that he has provided. It's all about his grace. All you got to do is put your faith in a Savior. If you've never done that, today is the day. Today is the day. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. That he is who he says he is. And you know what? Then you get to become who he says you are. When you do that, you become a new creation. A new creation. Your old man is crucified with Christ and your new man comes out of the tomb with Jesus to a new life. When you come up here today, I want you to remember what Jesus did for you. I want you to remember, man, when I take this bread, when I take this bread, this is Jesus healing my body. When you take this bread, this is Jesus healing your body. It was broken for you. When you drink this cup, this is Jesus writing a new covenant for you with his blood. When you take this bread, this is Jesus making you whole. We're opening this up. This is an open table today. 
You come up and you take communion when you're ready. I want everyone here to take communion. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I don't want you not to take it out of fear. Okay? I don't want you to not take it out of fear. I want you to know God is here for you. He loves you. Examine what he has done for you today.